What if Tanjiro ran into Muzan instead of Gyu in episode 1? Would Muzan kill Tanjiro right away, or would he turn him into a demon? Well, I found three possible ways the story could continue, and for theory 1, Muzan would try to kill Tanjiro. See, Muzan would immediately see these Hanafuda earrings on Tanjiro. And if you remember, Muzan has been targeting everyone with those earrings since Yorichi almost killed him centuries ago, meaning that he would immediately kill Tanjiro and Nezuko 10 minutes into the first episode. But Muzan would unknowingly be making a huge mistake by doing this, because his goal for the last thousand years has been to find a way to resist the sun. And by killing the Commodos, Muzan would eliminate the only people who could help him do this, meaning he would have to wait for another sun breather to be born, which could take another thousand years. Now, killing Tanjiro could also give Muzan unexpected benefits. See, without Tanjiro in the story, demon slayers like Inosuke and Zenitsu would die against Kyogai, and Hashira like Kengen would die against Upper Moons. So if Muzan is smart with his battles, he could kill off a bunch of high-ranking demon slayers, allowing him to grow his army of demons even more. Things would get even better for Muzan, because then he could just send his demons all over Japan to search for the blue spider lily, the only other thing in the story that can make Muzan resistant to the sun. Now this is just one of the three possible ways the story could continue. And in theory too, Muzan makes a decision that's kind of shocking. See, instead of killing the Commodos in the second theory, Muzan realizes that having a demon sun breather might be helpful. So he turns Tanjiro into a demon and then kidnaps Nezuko. Tanjiro hates this, but we all know that he's willing to do anything for his sister. Even so, Muzan's first order is horrible. Tanjiro has to kill and eat everyone in his village or Nezuko dies. While crying, demon Tanjiro listens to Muzan and his strength explodes. And it's at this point that Muzan realizes Tanjiro's true potential, giving him more and more blood over the next couple years. Unlike other demons, Tanjiro's strength shows no sign of slowing down and he quickly becomes the upper moon too, stronger than any demon moon except Kokushibo. Around this time, Muzan starts phase two of his devious plan, ordering Tanjiro to start killing Hashira. Tanjiro pretends to listen, but instead he secretly comes up with his own genius plan to defeat Muzan. See, instead of killing the Hashira, Tanjiro instead spares their lives and tells them to hide at the Demon Slayer HQ. After doing this with enough Hashira, Tanjiro's plan is to bait Muzan into attacking the Demon Slayer headquarters and then ambush the Demon King with the Hashira's help. So over the next couple months, Tanjiro pretends to kill Gyu and Shinobu at Mount Natagumo, Rengoku on the Mugen train, and Tengen at the Entertainment District. This is extra hard because Tanjiro has to make sure that any demons present don't become suspicious. However, if we assume that everything goes well, Tanjiro's ambush on Muzan is finally ready after he pretends to kill Muichiro and Mitsuri at the Swordsmith Village. At this point, Muzan is extremely happy because he thinks six of the nine Hashira are dead. So when Tanjiro suggests wiping out the weakened Demon Slayer HQ once and for all, Muzan agrees. Now before we jump into Muzan's attack, let's talk about today's sponsor, War Thunder, the ultimate vehicle combat game offering a wild selection of over 2,000 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships for crazy PvP battles. The attention to detail is insane, with stunning graphics, authentic sound effects, and captivating music. But here's the best part, near unlimited customization. War Thunder gives tons of options, from hundreds of camouflages to historical markings and 3D decorators. They even have anime-style vehicles like this 3D Dakimakura and the Japanese AH-1S helicopter Kizarazu. The game is available for free on PC, Xbox, PlayStation 5, and previous console generations. And if you register on PC using my link, you'll get an incredible bonus pack including premium vehicles, boosted accounts, and more. Huge thanks to War Thunder for making this possible. Let's go! On the night of the attack, Tanjiro stays back with a couple demon moons while Muzan goes ahead with Kokushibo. Alone, Tanjiro kills every single demon moon and then escapes with Nezuko. After hiding her in a safe place, he runs to the HQ to help the Hashira defeat Muzan. But to his horror, half of the Hashira are already dead. See, against both Kokushibo and Muzan, it's just impossible for them to do any real damage. Remember in the fight against Muzan in the original story? The Hashira only had a chance because Muzan was severely weakened by poison. Tanjiro rushes into the fight to help the Demon Slayers, but even with his demon strength, he's no match against Muzan and Kokushibo. Slowly but surely, the Hashira are killed off until it's just Tanjiro facing off against Muzan. Now, some people might say that Tanjiro's Hinokami Kagura might be unlocked here, but it wouldn't help him against 
against Muzan, because in the actual story, Tanjiro had to train for years before it became deadly. And to make a long story short, Muzan toys with Tanjiro and then kills him for his betrayal. As Tanjiro slowly fades away, he's at least happy to know that Nezuko is safe and still alive. Now, this is definitely a sad theory, but there's another theory I have, and it's even darker. Just like the previous theories, this one begins with Tanjiro running into Muzan, but this time, Muzan starts torturing Tanjiro. See, Muzan is tired of fearing the Hanafuda earrings, and now he just wants revenge. He turns Tanjiro into a demon to make sure that it doesn't kill him, and over the next couple hours, Muzan inflicts pain on young Tanjiro in every possible way. But to make things even worse, Muzan kills Nezuko too, and this finally causes Tanjiro to break. Tanjiro just lies there, sobbing his heart out from the physical and mental pain. After seeing this, Muzan leaves Tanjiro basically dead on the ground, happy that he's gotten revenge on the Hanafuda earrings. But leaving Tanjiro alive would become Muzan's biggest mistake. See, after lying on the ground for days, Tanjiro finally heals from his wounds, and his only goal at this point is to kill Muzan. But of course, Tanjiro isn't strong enough yet, so he starts practicing by killing Muzan's demon minions instead. And this is where Tanjiro discovers that he has a special power. See, in the original story, Tanjiro's sister was special. She could recharge her powers by sleeping, while other demons had to eat humans. And Tanjiro was similar, because instead of having to eat humans, he can get stronger by eating demons. After discovering this, Tanjiro becomes the demon assassin, killing demons and then eating them to gain their power. After a couple of demons, he also finds out that if he takes a bite of a demon while fighting them, he can steal their powers and make them weaker. Over the next couple years, Years, Tanjiro eats so many demons that he becomes just as strong as an upper moon. He also becomes an ally to the Demon Slayer Corps, but doesn't join it. His goals are much more bloodthirsty than theirs. Around this time, Muzan hears about Tanjiro and his powers, but every demon he sends after Tanjiro gets killed and eaten. On the Mugen train, Demon Tanjiro helps Rengoku against Anmu. See, when he realizes that Rengoku is being put in a nightmare by blood demon art, Tanjiro searches for Anmu and then bites him, canceling Anmu's sleeping powers. Once Rengoku wakes up, he joins Tanjiro, and together, they take the lower moon down. But all of a sudden, the train is derailed by Akaza, who was sent to kill demon Tanjiro once and for all. However, this fight goes differently than the original story, because with Tanjiro's demon powers, Akaza is going to be at a disadvantage. First, Rengoku attacks with his flame breathing, and when Akaza is distracted, Tanjiro sneaks in and takes a massive bite out of him. Remember, Tanjiro has the power to steal other demons' powers, so this fight changes the entire fight. Akaza is now incredibly weakened and can't regenerate anymore, while Tanjiro can now use Akaza's powerful attacks, meaning that after a few attacks from Rengoku and Tanjiro, they manage to slice off Akaza's head and kill him. That's one upper moon down and five more to go. If we fast forward to the entertainment district, Demon Tanjiro is also there and he helps Tangen against Yutaro and Daki. Since he's a demon, the fight is again much easier than in the original story. Tanjiro is much stronger than Daki, so he's able to cut off her head immediately, and then he kicks it as far as he can, causing her to be out of the fight in the first few minutes. Then, together with Inosuke and Zenitsu, Tanjiro joins Tengen against Yutaro. Now, Yutaro is a tough guy to beat, but between Tengen's musical score ability, Tanjiro's dangerous bites, and Zenitsu's lightning quick speed, the group manages to weaken him to the point where they can cut his head off. Now, Tanjiro does something after each of these fights that makes him even stronger. See, he makes sure to eat the Demon Moon's bodies before they fade away. This this gives him such a power boost that he's now equal in strength with the Upper Moon 1 Kokushibo. At the Swordsmith Village, Tanjiro attacks Hantengu and Gyoko, easily beating them with Muichido and Mitsuri's help. When Muzan hears about this, he is enraged. His strongest soldiers are being destroyed by a demon boy with Hanafuda earrings. He sends the last Upper Moon Kokushibo to kill Tanjiro, and it's a close fight. It looks like Tanjiro is going to lose, but once he remembers how his family was murdered, Tanjiro's rage makes him even stronger and he manages to kill Kokushibo. Now, only Muzan is left for Tanjiro's revenge to be complete. So first, Tanjiro kidnaps and tortures random demons until one of them finally reveals where Muzan's secret base is. After that, Tanjiro rounds up every Hashira and Demon Slayer, and together, they come up with a plan to ambush the Demon King the next time he exits his base. Night falls a couple days later, and Muzan walks out of the base. Everyone charges, and it's a fight to the death. Now, there's not a strong strategy behind attacking Muzan. 
Tanjiro and his allies are all aware that the Demon King is stronger than each of them individually, and even though Tanjiro has managed to defeat all the upper moons, he's still much weaker than Muzan, the original demon. So the best plan Tanjiro and the allies come up with is to keep Muzan outside while the sun comes out to burn him to death. It's a deadly gamble and many demon slayers die, but after a long, long night, the sun comes out and Muzan starts burning. He dashes for cover, but Tanjiro tackles him and manages to hold him down for a few more seconds. The remaining Hashira also sprint over and start fighting to keep him down, and after a few minutes, the Demon King is burned up and gone for good. But now, Tanjiro doesn't have a goal anymore. He's killed Muzan, but his entire family is dead, so he spends the rest of his life wandering the earth, even exploring other countries, searching for something to give his life meaning. Eventually, he falls in love and has a family, naming his first daughter Nezuko. Join us as the battle unfolds and excitement fills the air. Get in on the action and remember, use my link for that awesome bonus pack. Now these were some crazy theories, but don't stop here. Click this video to watch the most disrespectful moments in anime history. Click it!